Welcome to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast where you'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made more money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more, go to writeyourbookinaflash.com. Now let's welcome today's guest, Kimberly Hobshide. Hi, Dan. How are you? Doing great. You're sounding wonderful. We had some technical difficulties early, and I hope that uh, we're going to be going smoothly through here as you tell us about the wonderful world of audiobooks. How did you get started with audiobooks? So I'm really excited about this story because um, I actually got started in audiobooks as a family venture. What happened is I was a six-time entrepreneur, and uh, my son came to me one day and he said, Mom, I've got a problem. And I thought, okay, what's the problem, sweetheart? And he said, I'm 15 and a half, and I'm going into summer. And that's a really bad age to be going into summer break because you're too young to get a summer job, and I'm too old to go back to summer camp because I'm taller than all the camp counselors. And I couldn't agree, with, I couldn't disagree with him. He was a tall young man. And I said, um, you know what you're never too young or too old to do is be an entrepreneur. So why don't we create a business around what you love doing? So we went about, set about like looking at all the different things he really enjoyed. And we did what any good parent in the 20th century would do. We put all of those things into Google and said, what should we do? Right? And out popped, why don't you be an audiobook narrator? And he looked at me and he says, can we do that? And I thought, sure, why not? You know, that sounds like a lot of fun. He loved improv and he loved children and he loved reading books. Um, And he loved performing. Uh, So I thought, absolutely, sounds like a great summer job, right? So um, we ordered some stuff on Amazon and decided to start narrating audiobooks. And he auditioned for three the night that all the stuff came on Amazon. He auditioned already for three of them and got accepted right away. And we were off and running in our audiobooks business. As a matter of fact, we got so much business that we couldn't handle it all, and we had to start training other people to be audiobook narrators. And so we started teaching a local class at a local adult school and taught a whole bunch of people how to become audiobook narrators, and sort of the rest is history. That's an amazing story. And after you hear me talk for 20 minutes, maybe you'll see if I have any potential for being an audiobook narrator. (laughs) But let's focus on our listeners. Um, Why do authors need to have an audiobook these days? Oh, Dan, that's a great question. Well, if you guys are listeners right now, if you are regular authors, chances are you really like books, like book books. The book, if you're a, a professional author, chances are you are a book reader and not an audiobook fan. Um, I learned this because when we started our audiobook business and we decided to market it to authors, look, a lot of authors rolled their eyes and they were like, oh, I'm not. You know, I don't really like audiobooks. It's sort of sort of got this feeling like it's pretend, like it's not the real way to consume a book. And so I thought, huh, that's interesting because I love audiobooks, right? Well, it turns out it's about a third, a third, a third. So a third of the population likes reading books. They like to curl up at night with a good book. They like the smell of a book. They like to go in and browse through bookstores. They just like the physical book. That's about a third of our population. That's my mom. She loves to curl up with a good book at night, right? And then there's uh, about a third of the population who only listens to audiobooks. They will not buy books. Now, they might get a book for free or, you know, get an ebook download or, and scan it or something, but they're not real book consumers, not the hardback or paperback physical book consumer. And then about a third of the population is, is either or. And as a matter of fact, I was in that either or category for many years until I left a book on an airplane by Carrie Fisher. And I loved it so much. And I was so disappointed that I left it on the airplane. And when I got out the other side, um, it turned out that they actually in the airport, they sold the book. So I bought the book a second time. And when I got back on the airplane coming home, I left the book on the airplane the second time. 
And so after that, I was like, I'm not buying any more books. I bought her book in audiobook. It's actually in her voice. Uh, so if you guys are thinking of narrating your own book, it's a, it could be a very good thing to do. Um, and it's in her own voice and I absolutely loved it. And that's about the last book I bought from that point forward. I really am an audiophile. I have over a thousand audiobooks on my, my little, um, iPhone and my audio device. And that's, uh, the rest is history from there. I really enjoy audiobooks. And if you are an author trying to get your media into somebody's hands or into somebody, somebody's personage, uh, you need to have it in all forms of media in the way that they best consume. So if about a third of your listener or a third of your populace is only going to get your book if you create an audiobook, that's a really good reason to have an audiobook. Wow, you touch on so many good points there. You know, I guess I'm in that third that likes both. I mean, if it's fiction, I love curling up with the book and imagining the, the sounds of my own head of the different voices. When it's a uh, business kind of book, uh, I listened to Phil Knight's book, uh, the, the president of uh, the founder of Nike, and he it was it was great. It was professionally read, and it was an, an engrossing story, and it was it was fantastic. And I I listened to Educated, and I borrowed that from my library, so I didn't have rights to it. And eventually, it expired. And then I went to and I and I got the book because I, so, I, so I started in one medium and finished in another medium. Um, you raise an interesting point. Should an author read their own book or should they hire talent? So that is a really good question. And as a matter of fact, we have thousands of audiobook listeners now that we have on our mailing list. And so we mail it a survey to them, you know, should an author read their own book? And it came down, believe it or not, a resounding no, they should not read their own book. But primarily the responses that we got were actually from fiction listeners, people who listen to fiction. And fiction is often character voices, as you describe, and things like that. And many times people want the, if, if you're an author, you may be a really good writer that can write a very gripping tale of zombie apocalypse or something of the like, but then you're not, you may not necessarily be an actor or a voice performer. And if you're not, it can really change the tenor of your book. And so at that point, you really want to hire a voice talent. Now... Um, if you are writing your own book and it's a, uh, a book that is advice, it could be a variety of different things, and those all can be read, read by talent. We recommend that, especially if you're nervous about your own voice. And it does cost actually more money to, to do your own book, even though you're reading it and you're the voice talent. Be, by the time you pay a professional editor to edit it, all of the voice talent that we hire have their own, do their own editing. So it can actually cost you significantly more, sometimes thousands of dollars more just to get your work edited because you are not a professional. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. However, I do recommend it if it's your coaching and your voice. And especially if it's a, 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 a story that is, is of impact where you're teaching somebody your principles. So say, for example, um, Brene Brown, she's a TEDx speaker. She's also a very good performer, and she's an author. She actually reads her own stuff. If it was in somebody else's voice, the, the listener might think, hmm, I wonder why, right? Because she does have that talent and that ability. In another example, you might have a coach who's coaching on a particular topic, and if it's not in their voice, the, the listener may be like, hmm, I wonder why they outsource that and it's in somebody else's voice when they learn from them directly. Um, so there's a variety of different things that, that go into deciding. I will tell you that the majority of the people that we work with that I'm hearing stories, they do decide to use a professional narrator. It's usually less expensive. It's usually a lot more fun and having it be outsourced and, you know, six weeks later their book is up and published on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon it can be a very stress-free, exciting proposition. And how much, uh, if, if there were range, for again, our audience are business book writers, coaches, speakers, author, um, consultants, small business owners, and the like. Um, how much would they expect to pay for, say, a 200-page or 20,000-word book or 120-page book? 
Well, if you do it yourself, you can do it really for no charge. I know you're not that, that you'll find that hard to believe, but there are narrators that work out there on something called royalty share, which means that you will be splitting the profits with them 50-50. So the royalties from the book, 50% of the royalties go to the narrator and 50% go to the author. And so there are many narrators out there that will work on royalty share. Another way to pay is per finished hour. So if your book is 30,000 words, it will be a four hour book approximately based on the speed of a person reading a book. If, a, if you have a four hour book and you're paying $200 per finished hour, which is about the going rate, somewhere between $100 and $300 per finished hour. So say you pay $200 per finished hour, you'll pay $800 to have your book read and formatted and edited in uh, in proper audiobook format, which then can be uploaded to iTunes, Amazon, and Audible, and the other platforms as well. Great. That's not much uh, at all. I would have thought it would be a lot more expensive. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's good it news. Can be. Hey, it well. can be. And, and for those of you who know how to do it and want to go through that process yourself, um, that it can be very cost-effective. We actually have a done-for-you service where basically you hand us the book, we go out and find audiobook narrators to, to audition for it. So you have about 20 different narrators competing with their different voices for your book. And they can, uh, and then we help you get it not only up on iTunes, Amazon, and Audible, but also we do the heavy lifting on the back end, which is the marketing. Now, if you have authors in your tribe, you know that even the most experienced authors say that the book, when the book is finished, the, the work begins, which is the marketing piece of it. And that's what we actually specialize in is getting it reviewed, which is extremely important in the audiobook industry. We want to get it reviewed. You want to get it reviewed by people who have listened to 100, 200, 300, 500,000 books and done that many um, that many reviews of books. You want somebody who's qualified in order to review the book. If, if It's pretty see-through when you see that your nephew and aunt mm. reviewed your book for you. It's pretty, it's pretty clear to audiobook listeners. They're very picky in that particular category. They want to see that somebody who listens to audiobooks evaluated it, loved it, and, and wrote it. multiple comments. Yeah, I, I notice on Audible that the reviewers have several different categories. I think one is the story, one is the narration. I forget what the other qualification is, but You're I found right. this to be really useful because if the narrator is, is, is gets bad marks, you can't listen to this on your daily walks. You know, it becomes, becomes pretty much the chore. Uh, let me go back to the idea of selecting a narrator. A friend of mine had a book published by a major New York publisher, and they uh -huh. hired their own voiceover artist. They did not give him any rights of refusal. And they published it, and he did not do a good job. And he knew, my, my, my friend said, this person did not do me well. And his friends also heard that person and said, what right, do, do published authors have any rights when it comes to working with a traditional publishing company on, on selecting authors, selecting narrators? So that's a really good point. We work with a lot of self-published authors primarily, but we have worked several times with people who've published a book traditionally. And what we do is we, we make sure that they have not already surrendered their audiobook rights because mm. every book actually has audiobook rights, which are sole and separate from the published book rights. So they may not have included the, the audiobook rights within that contract. And then we actually coach our authors who work with publishers to do one of two things. Either they go to the author and they, or the publisher and they say, will you publish an audiobook because you have the rights to it? I want it published. Let's make that happen. And oftentimes the publisher will back off and say, we're not going to do it. And if they say that, we actually encourage them to say, will you surrender the rights back to me? Will you, re will you give them back to me? Because I do want to publish an audiobook and it helps because once you publish an audiobook, it actually draws attention to the book again, and they make more book sales. So it's written like book book, physical book sales, because you're advertising the audiobook now. And people will grab it saying, oh, I want, to, I want both copies, or I want a copy just in paperback or just in hardback. So it's to the advantage of the publisher to actually get another medium out there as well. So oftentimes you can get them back even if you surrendered them. That's fascinating. You know, I, I do book giveaways and I had one author whose 
could not participate because his book was published by a traditional publisher. But he said, you know, I own the audio rights. Can you use the audio book in your promo? And I said, well, I haven't before, but let's try it. And of course we did. And it was a major success. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, don't give away your audio rights. That that's, that's such a good point. Um, you know, you, you talk about the, the rights and such, and I'm just curious, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm going to cut this out. Uh, I lost okay. my train of thought. You want to talk about how to, um, out, about the fact that some people get one narrator and because there's a lot we can talk about on that. Uh, what lead up question should I ask you? So, um, so do you, how do you get the choice for a narrator? How, how do you go about choosing a narrator sure. if you get a choice, something like that? Sure. I'm going to put this as a marking point. You know, there's a lot of talent out there. You, uh, people who are, perky, people who are authoritative, there's male voice versus female voice. If you're a male author or a female author, what should you look for when you're looking for a narrator? That's a great question. So as you mentioned before, there's quite a, a few people that have signed over their audiobook rights to a publisher and they picked the narrator and it's their choice and not up to the author. We really don't recommend that. We really recommend having a variety of options as your narrator. Now that can actually include you as well. Like you can audition for your own book, right? Read it for yourself and see if you like your voice compared to some of the other professionals that are out there. See how hard it is for you to do. When you're looking for a narrator, when we give 20 or 30 different examples to our authors to choose from, they're trying to find that voice in their head that does it justice, that does it that's like, that sounds like the right kind of voice for my book that's going to carry it forward. Oftentimes, authors will already have that voice in their head. And we do allow the authors, and there are many ways to choose whether they want a male or female or either, right? So you can say, no, I know that this book is about you know women's empowerment, and, and it's just not going to sound the same if it's read by a man. So we definitely want a female voice behind it. Or this one's about being a soldier. And while there are many women soldiers out there, it really wouldn't make sense because this was in the Civil War. So we really want it to be a male voice that reads it. And that makes all the sense in the world. And it's not really um, a sexist comment to do that. It's just whatever voice is in your head. You might want somebody with a Southern accent. You might want somebody with a Bostonian accent. You might want somebody with a British accent. If you have a fiction book and it's set in the Northeast, of America, you're not going to want them to have my California Southern style, right? <laughs> it's just not going to sound right. So you might want to have some sort of twang or something like that. Um, oftentimes, a, a, a talented voiceover artist can pull off a different voice. For example, I auditioned for a piece that I did not know was set in the uh, black Southern Mississippi. And I just, they picked me probably because my name was Kim, I don't know, which is a common name for African-American people back then. And I did a Southern accent. What I did not know is I was going to have to pull a Southern off, accent off for the entire book. And so it was very difficult to do. But once I did it, I was really proud that I was able to pull that off. So it could be, it's really what you're listening for. It doesn't necessarily need to be, um, need to be anything other than your choice as the author, which is why sometimes when a publisher is picking your author for you and you think, ooh, that's really not the voice I, in my head, it can be very disconcerting. We do recommend having a variety of narrators to choose from. Okay. Let's talk about voice. That's a great uh, great stopping off point. Uh, probably more so for fiction than nonfiction, but even in nonfiction books, we'll have a case study and there'll be a, a dialogue. Uh, do you suggest that the narrator use different voices for each person in that case study? Because I've heard it straight and it didn't sound right to me. Yep. So you're going to want to do uh, a hint of it, but less is more. So surprisingly, unless you're reading a children's fiction book where you're doing crazy voices for the little bird and the little, the little uh, deer and the little bear, um, and that's fine if you're going to be doing like character voices that are big like that. Really, you just want to lean into it a little bit. So, for example, for you might want to give one character a southern accent, or you just a slight hint of a southern accent, or you might want to give one character a, a slower pace, where if you slow down the voice, it'll sound like a different character. 
or you might want to speed up because, or you might want to do it in a higher voice, right? So it can be a variety of different things, but really less is more because you don't want to distract the listener with a really crazy voice there because it'll be difficult to listen to after some time. Were you an actress before you started this? You're, you're great. <laughs> It's, uh, yes, I do have acting in my background, but you do not need to have acting in your background to be a voiceover artist. Voiceover artists can be really from any different walk of life. The big differentiator in a, in a good narrator from a not good narrator is can you tell a story? When you tell a story at Christmas time, are people leaning forward in their chairs and they love to hear the next piece that comes out of your mouth? I don't care if you have an old craggy voice or a young children's voice or, you know, a high voice or a low voice. You can get away with pretty much any voice and read something. But if you have a monotone voice, then it's really painful to listen to. If you have a voice tick or something where it's, it's distracting, it can be very difficult to listen to. If you have a stutter... If you have a stutter, it can be difficult to listen to if you do not overcome your stutter by reading. And there are many people with a stutter when they're actually reading a book and they don't have to think about what they're going to say, the stutter completely disappears. So if you have a stutter, think about it and see if it works for you. And don't rule yourself out because it's entirely possible you could be a great voiceover actor. Fantastic. Do you have any final tips as we wrap up? If you don't already have an audiobook, I don't know why you wouldn't. About 80%, uh, I'm sorry, about um, one in 20 books is made into an audiobook. That means that you are competing against only 5% of your competition. Further, a, a physical book is read all the way to the end about 10% of the time. About 10% of the people who buy your book are going to read your book all the way to the words, the end. However, with an audiobook, about 80% of your audience is going to listen all the way to the end. So if the subject, if the object of the game is to get your material inside other human beings, the best, one of the best ways to do it is through an audio book. Fantastic. Kimberly, why don't you tell us who your ideal client is and how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, my ideal a client is somebody who published on iTunes, Amazon, or Audible, or any other, uh, I'm sorry, on Amazon, so that we can publish it on iTunes, Amazon, and Audible. If you have it published in another format, not and it's not available from, from Amazon, we can work with you as well, no problem. Um, and we would love to, to talk to you about the possibility of creating your book into an audiobook format and bringing it to life. And how can people get in touch with you? You can email me at Kimberly, that's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, at I'mHearingStories.com. There's no apostrophe in that. It's I'mHearingStories.com. Great. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Write Your Book in a Flash podcast with Dan Janelle, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. If you're ready to take your next step to write the book that can transform your business, I invite you to schedule a free, no-obligation consulting call with me by going to writeyourbookinaflash.com. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.